This fair play 2333, and I want to give a salute to all my cinema cronies. Welcome back to the Power Book Multiverse and Cinema Show, where you get the latest in Power Universe and Cinema Breakdown. I, I, I just want the life that niggas can't afford. We, we, we whipping them babies once you can't aboard. Not looking for beef, but some you can't avoid. And if I'm on a mission, it's you on the voyage. BMF had an exciting episode, so I say, you know what? I'm going to give this to the Power Book Multiverse and Cinema Cronies. Now, Kevin basically found himself in some trouble in jail because of his dad. Now, his dad... Now, let's start back a little bit. Kevin is in jail because of his own actions, but also at the same time, his dad is so thirsty trying to chase Meech and get Meech locked up that he not paying attention to what's going on in his own house. His son, Kevin, gets a hold of his gun and he kills a kid. Basically, somebody who is very smart succumbed to the pressures of being bullied and made an emotional decision that changed his life forever. Now, Detective Bryant basically told somebody, hey, I'll pull something off for you. I got a job. I'll do it. And when he wasn't able to do that job, the lady basically called off her protection. She said, you know what? I'm not having them protect you no more. So Kevin told him, yo, the guys that you've been saying was going to protect me, they not protecting me anymore. And they actually beating on me. Now, that was the first time he went to see him. Um, and now the second time he went to see him, uh, his face was all beat up. And then Kevin told him, hey, I got something else to tell you, too. It was late at night. They got around me. I tried to fight them off, but I couldn't. And one of them pulled my pants down. So essentially, not only did Kevin get beat on, but Kevin got graped. Yeah, take the, a lowercase g with a capital R A P and y'all can understand the rest. So from that point, um, Detective Bryant was in um, a bad shape from that point, man. And his son caught the blunt of it. I wish he could have helped Kevin out. But the craziest part is that the next time he saw Kevin, Kevin was not alive. His spirit was up in the sky. So he succumbed to all the pressure of what was going on inside of that place. And he was just feeling like, listen, I cannot, I cannot, I cannot take any more of this. I got to get out of here. And, you know, that happens a lot to people in jail. They make an emotional decision. They end up in jail. They not really built for that environment. They get taken advantage of. And um, once they get taken advantage of, some of them start using drugs um, some of them start participating in the behavior they was forced to be in. Um, and then some of them say, I need to escape and they unalive themselves. I feel like this is all Detective Brian's fault, man. Detective Brian could have did a lot more to protect Kevin. Um, Detective Brian could have, uh, instead of trying to make Kevin tougher, he could have tried to take Kevin out of that environment and maybe put him in a boarding school, put him somewhere that could um, host his talent and make him a much better man, a much, a much better person. But instead, man, he left his gun laying around where his son could find it and his son took matters into his own hand. Now, the most emotional part was when he read the letter and the letter said, um, you will always be my hero, but I'm not as strong as you. I love you, Kevin. That was like crazy from the standpoint of everything and the emotions that they went through, man, because he had ended up being able to get Kevin a lawyer. But the real question for me is why wasn't Kevin just placed into PC? Now, I know this is juvie, but also after Kevin got beat up the first time, he was supposed to get a lawyer right down there to say, hey, my son has been beat on. Even though he haven't said whatever he said, he feared for his life. We need him to go into some type of isolation, some type of protective custody. And Kevin would have been moved. So that's the biggest part I'm not understanding. Even though he's a minor, he can still feel for his life. He can still say that I've been beat on. Or even if he can't, um, sometimes even when you're... Um, I forgot what the administrative segregation, right? 
even though you don't want to move, they can still move you because they feel your safety is at hand. And to be honest, they don't want anybody to die on a watch. I do not understand what is going on with this situation and why he didn't have him just move to PC. That's my biggest question. That is something that's so crazy to me. Um, very, very unfortunate situation, but I think it's something that needed to be addressed from a standpoint of like, if you somebody younger who watching this situation and you somebody who not really understanding what the streets is about, you somebody who not really understanding that, you know, when you being extorted, the same people who protecting you can turn around and be the people who harming you. Also, if you from a, uh, you from a certain area, but you really not built like that, you need to understand that, you know, making a bad decision can ruin your life forever. Um, when we looked at Kevin, Kevin was on a trajectory to probably be something great. A scientist, a lawyer, an engineer, he could draw, maybe an architect, um, building sculptures in downtown Detroit, designing buildings in downtown De Detroit. But instead he turned into a memory of his father he turned into a memory to his father and he became nothing more than a young black boy lost to the system who uh was failed in so many ways but more than anything i hate to say it but failed by his father now if y'all want me to do more of these bmf breakdowns just let me know um uh, i'm not gonna lie when i first started watching it it wasn't worth the breakdown in my opinion but the series is actually getting a lot better now i'm gonna do another video directly after this one that's gonna be about stack situation in bmf and how he tried to play michi and everybody so click the subscribe button also man we doing great over there on um facebook follow me over there I, we have a power book group over there and it's a uh, power book multiverse and cinema i would love to see y'all over there we got a lot of people in there participating liking stuff putting up posts asking questions y'all get over there so y'all voice can be heard also man i need y'all to support me personally and go over to instagram at f a i r p l a y underscore two three 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 now what do y'all think about this situation what do y'all think kevin could have done different outside of not shooting the other kid in the first place but most importantly what could detective brian have done differently to not fail his son it was so many um signs that kevin was being uh pressured so much that he was gonna succumb to the pressure of society and we never know what he was gonna do or where he was gonna go in life. So we need to figure that part of the game out before anything, man. Rest in peace to Kevin um, and Detective Bryant. He's still in trouble too because um, his partner had enough, his ex-partner, the Asian woman, she had enough. She was actually trying to get him arrested uh, but her partner ended up getting killed in that process. I may speak on that as well. But anyway, salute to the cinema cronies, baby. Check out the original Chicago Hood web series, No Time to Play Fair, Chicago Do's and Don'ts episode. It's out now, written by, co-directed by, and starring me, Fairplay2333.